Hello everyone. Welcome to our hands-on training exercises. Today, we'll show you how to produce quantitative maps of biophysical variables from hyperspectral data using the Nmap box, even when there are no in-situ measurements available. Let's start by opening QGIS Desktop. Please ensure that you are running a current version. In our case, that is 3.26.3. .3. In addition, make sure you have an up-to-date Nmap box plugin installed at least version 3.11. Instructions on how to install the Nmap box can be found in the info box below. Now, launch the Nmap box by clicking on the Nmap box icon. Then, take a look at the auxiliary data that we've provided for download. There are several folders, through which we will go step by step. First, we open the folder containing the airborne data. Here you will find a raster image in BSQ format. As the name suggests, this is not satellite but airborne data acquired by the Averis NG instrument over the Irbach area, which is an intensively used agricultural area in southern Germany on 30th of May 2021, a very sunny Sunday. Simply drag and drop the BSQ file into the Nmap box and display the scene by right-clicking on the raster layer in the Data Sources window, selecting Open in New Map, and then one of the display options. The Nmap box offers quite a range of pre-configured visualization options, but you can also define your own preferred combination of bands. I chose the Shortwave Infrared 1 configuration, meaning the red channel displays a SWIR band at 2,202 nanometers, the green channel a near band at 833 nanometers, and the blue channel a red band at 665 nanometers. Such a false color SWIR visualization is very common in vegetation applications, as areas covered by dense vegetation appear in bright green shades and open soils in pink, making it easy to differentiate the gradients in between. And here it is, our beautiful test site in the Erlbach region. The scene was captured on a perfectly sunny Sunday. By clicking on the spectrum icon in the menu above, and then clicking into the data display, you can automatically open a graph showing the spectrum of the corresponding pixel. As you can see, there are many continuous bands, a real hyperspectral data set. Now, the task is to produce quantitative maps of biophysical variables from the hyperspectral data. Such maps can provide important information for optimized agricultural management. However, you have probably never been in the area and have no information about the situation there. When using space-borne hyperspectral data, such as Nmap imagery, this is actually quite a realistic assumption. To retrieve the variables in a computationally efficient way, we will use a machine learning algorithm. More specifically, we will use a hybrid retrieval method where simulated reflectance model data is used to train an artificial neural network, or ANN for short. To do so, open the Applications toolbar from the main menu, enter the Agricultural Applications suite, and select the Create Lookup Table tool. We need to generate a training database that will be large and diverse enough to satisfy the needs of our machine learning algorithm. With the Create Lookup Table tool, we can populate the training database with combinations of reflectance signatures and corresponding model parameters. The way in which we design the training data has a huge impact on the retrieval results. First, we need to define some general settings, such as the sensor for which the training data should be compiled. In our case, this is the Averis NG airborne sensor, but please note that spaceborne instruments such as Nmap are also part of the list. Then, we need to define the combination of leaf optical properties model and canopy radiative transfer model that we would like to use. For this example, we use the default option, which is the well-known combination of Prospect D and Foresail, commonly referred to as ProSail. And, as we do not have any detailed information about the spectral characteristics of the soils in our area of interest, we also use the default soil spectrum as background. In the Settings section, we can specify the number of statistical drawings that will populate the lookup table. Selecting larger numbers here will result in potentially finer increments between the different parameters.
but also a large file size. Aiming for a good compromise, we keep the default value of 2000. Next, we need to define a destination folder. For example, the second one of the set we provided for download, and a file name under which the newly created training database will be stored. For example, agrimove for the no data value and the multiplication factor to convert reflectance, we will also assume the default values of negative 999 and 10,000 respectively. Then, check the box to the right in order to include the natural covariation of chlorophylls and carotenoids in your training database that is often observed in nature. Now, the bottom part of the panel contains the leaf optical properties model parameters, as well as the canopy model parameters. Let's start with the leaf model parameters. For every parameter, you may choose between four options to enter parameters in your training database. Using fixed values, following a statistical Gauss distribution, or a statistical uniform distribution, or entering values in logical steps. Ideally, the settings for the individual model parameters should be based on your a priori expert knowledge, allowing you to constrain some parameters to the expected value ranges. As in this exercise, we assume that we do not know very much about our area of interest. We will parameterize the training database in a very general way, using the following entries. For the structure parameter n, we select a statistically uniform distribution between 1.0 and 2.0. For the chlorophyll distribution, we also select a uniform distribution between 0.0 and 70.0 micrograms per square centimeter leaf area. This very large range is due to the fact that we have no a priori information about the situation in the Erbach area. For the water content, we assume a uniform distribution between 0.001 and 0.04 centimeters of absorbing water layer, and for the dry matter content, a uniform distribution between 0.002 and 0.01 grams per square centimeter. At this stage, the carotenoids cannot be adjusted due to the checked box above, but are calculated based on chlorophyll. For the brown pigments, we select a uniform distribution again and enter values between 0.0 and 0.4, as well as for the anthocyanins, for which we assume values between 1.0 and 2.0 micrograms per square centimeter leaf area. Proteins and carbon-based constituents cannot be adjusted because our selected leaf model does not take them into account. Perhaps you can use them in a future application if you choose, for example, the Prospect Pro leaf model. Okay, we are finished with the leaf model parameters and can continue with the canopy model parameters. Just change the tab above. We will start with the leaf area index that can best be described by a statistical Gaussian distribution between 0.5 and 7.5 meters squared per meter squared, which is pretty much the full range of values that we observe in nature, and set an average value of 4.0 and a standard deviation of 2.0. Now, the graph on the right displays the distribution of the variables that we just defined for our training database. For the leaf angle, we also select a Gaussian distribution assuming angles between 30 degrees and 70 degrees, with an average value of 45 and a standard deviation of 15 degrees. The hotspot size parameter is set to a uniform distribution between 0.01 and 0.5, and the observer zenith angle to a fixed value of 0 degrees, as the Averis NG sensor on the airplane observed the Earth's surface in nadir view. The sun zenith angle depends on the location on the globe and on the time of image acquisition. For the 30th of May 2021 in the Erbach area and a local observation time of 12.15 noon, we calculated a solar zenith angle of 30 degrees. As the image was acquired in Nadir view, the relative azimuth angle does not impact the model results. Thus, we enter a fixed angle of 0 degrees. And finally, we let the soil brightness parameter vary according to a uniform distribution between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. Now we can click the button Calculate LUT Size or Time on the right of the Settings section of the panel to get an estimate of how long the computation of our lookup table will take in the defined configuration. 
you may have found the process of defining the model parameters a bit complicated. For your future projects, the how to use this tool link at the bottom of the panel leads you to the Nmap Box website, where we provide detailed documentation on how to use the lookup table creation tool. Phew, that was rather exhausting. But now we are ready to run the model. Just click the Run LUT button. Depending on the size of the lookup table to be created, this may take a bit of time. Oops, finished. Now we can take a look into our output directory where the newly created files were stored. Most importantly, our training database as .lut file. In addition, there's a text file that may come in handy if you decide to modify the parameter configuration at a later stage. You can easily import this file via the Import Parameter Set button. This allows you to easily change single parameters without having to go through the entire process of configuration again. Well done! Now we can close the app and proceed with training our machine learning algorithm.